Episode 24, The Observer Effect. Does Consciousness Shape Reality? Welcome back to Barking at the Matrix, the space where science and spirit meet not in opposition, but in a kind of sacred entanglement, a place where the laws of physics whisper to the soul, and the soul, in turn, listens with curiosity, wonder, and a quiet defiance of certainty. Today, we enter a paradox, a question that has haunted physicists, mystics, and dreamers alike. Does the act of observation shape the very reality we perceive? Is consciousness merely a witness to the unfolding of the universe, or is it, in some strange and fundamental way, the sculptor of that unfolding, the hand behind the curtain, the eye that collapses the wave? This is the mystery of the observer effect, and it is not just a scientific anomaly, it is a philosophical earthquake. Let's begin, as we often do, in the quantum realm, that strange subatomic playground where the rules of classical logic dissolve and particles behave more like ideas than objects. In the iconic double-slit experiment, a beam of electrons is fired toward a barrier with two narrow openings. When no one is watching, when the system is left untouched, the electrons behave like waves, passing through both slits simultaneously and creating an interference pattern on the screen behind. But when a measuring device is introduced, when the electrons are observed, they collapse into particles, choosing one slit or the other, and the interference pattern disappears. It's as if the universe itself hesitates until it is seen. As if reality in its most fundamental form is not a fixed structure but a field of potential, a shimmering cloud of maybe, waiting for the gaze of consciousness to crystallize it into form. Now pause. Let that sink in. This is not metaphor. This is not mysticism dressed in lab coats. This is empirical, repeatable, measured. The act of observation changes the outcome, not because the observer interferes physically, but because the very presence of awareness seems to alter the behavior of matter. So what does this mean? Some physicists argue that it's simply a matter of measurement, that the tools we use to observe inevitably disturb the system, and that consciousness has nothing to do with it. But others, bold, curious, and unafraid of the metaphysical implications, suggest that consciousness itself may be woven into the fabric of reality, that the observer is not outside the system but inside it, entangled with it, essential to it. Let's step back even further. In ancient spiritual traditions, this idea is not new. It has been whispered in temples, chanted in monasteries, and painted into the mandalas of mystics for millennia. In Vedanta, the world is maya illusion not because it is false, but because it is impermanent, shifting, and shaped by perception. The true self, Atman, is the observer, the witness behind the mask, untouched by the drama of form. In Buddhism, the self is a construct, a bundle of sensations, memories, and thoughts, and liberation comes not from escaping reality, but from seeing through it. To observe without attachment is to dissolve the illusion. In Taoism, the world flows like water and only becomes rigid when named. The observer who watches without grasping becomes part of the flow. So we begin to see a pattern. Across disciplines, across cultures, across centuries, the act of observation is not passive. It is participatory, it is creative, it is sacred. Now let's return to the laboratory, not the quantum lab, but the lab of the mind. In neuroscience, perception is not a mirror. It is a model. Your brain is not a camera recording the world as it is. It is a prediction engine, constantly guessing what's about to happen and updating its internal map based on feedback. This is called predictive coding. The idea that your brain constructs reality from the inside out using memory, context, and expectation to fill in the gaps. What you see is not what's there. It's what your brain believes should be there. And when your expectations shift, so does your experience. This is why two people can witness the same event and remember it differently. Why eyewitness testimony is notoriously unreliable. Why memory is not a recording but a reconstruction, a story retold, reshaped, and reimagined every time it is recalled. The observer effect is not just quantum, it is cognitive, it is emotional, it is spiritual. Let's go deeper still. In psychology, there's a phenomenon called confirmation bias, 
The tendency to seek out evidence that supports your beliefs and to ignore or dismiss what contradicts them. In other words, you see what you expect to see, you hear what you're ready to hear, you experience what you're willing to believe. This isn't just a flaw in reasoning, it's a feature of consciousness. It's how the mind protects its model of reality. But it also means that reality is malleable, not fixed, not objective, but participatory. Now imagine this, you walk into a room, it's empty, silent, still. But you feel something, a presence, a weight, a shimmer. You turn, and suddenly the shadows shift. The air thickens. The room responds. Did you sense something that was already there, or did your attention summon it? Did you observe a truth, or did your consciousness collapse a possibility into form? This is the mystery. Are we discovering reality, or creating it? Is the universe a machine grinding away in cold indifference, or is it a mirror shimmering, responsive, alive? Let's consider dreams. In a lucid dream, you become aware that you're dreaming, and suddenly the dream responds. You can fly, you can shape the landscape, you can speak to archetypes, the dream becomes interactive, because the observer has awakened. Now ask yourself, what if waking life is no different? What if reality is lucid, but only when you remember to look? In simulation theory, this idea takes on a digital edge. If we are inside a simulation, then rendering is optimized. Only what's observed is rendered in high resolution. The rest is placeholder. Fog. Noise. This is why some theorists believe the universe is pixelated at the Planck scale. Why cosmic background radiation looks like a compression artifact. Why reality sometimes glitches, birds frozen mid-flight, strangers duplicated, buildings misaligned. Because the observer is the trigger, the cursor, the key. But let's not get lost in the code. Let's return to the soul. What does it mean to be an observer? It means you are not just reacting. You are participating. You are shaping. You are choosing. Every time you pay attention, you collapse possibility into form. Every time you speak, you carve reality with sound. Every time you love, you rewrite the script. So what do we do with this? We become conscious observers. We stop sleepwalking through the simulation. We stop assuming that reality is fixed. We start noticing the shimmer, the ripple, the response. We start listening, not just with ears, but with presence. Because the observer effect is not just a scientific principle, it's a spiritual invitation to wake up, to participate, to co-create. This has been barking at the matrix, where science meets spirit and where every observation is a doorway to deeper truth. Until next time, stay curious, stay lucid, and remember, the universe is watching you watch it. And in that gaze, reality begins.